This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 829, When You Love Your Work and Your Kids, by Hilary Barnett of wholemotherhood.co. Hello, everybody. Glad to have you here today. I am your host, Greg Audino, happy to be bringing another episode to you all today to help optimize your relationships. Today, we've got one for the parents out there. Obviously, having children is a massive part of our identities, if we do have them, and needless to say, very time-consuming. Though this time is often joyful, it can be challenging when we also have a love for work and want to maximize our work lives. Hilary Barnett, one of our regular contributors, has some advice for people in this very predicament. With many parents wanting to spend time with their children and lead fulfilling jobs, this one's coming at the right time. So let's give it a listen and start optimizing your life. When You Love Your Work and Your Kids by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co Mothers are constantly hearing two competing messages. The first message that often gets served to us is this, Never ever leave your children's presence. Manage every detail of their lives. Make sure they are always having new and enriching experiences. Protect them from anything and everything. Spend every waking minute being the perfect mom and keep them constantly entertained and happy. But, on the other hand, we hear from major female, supposedly feminist voices, that we should lean into our careers, not step back from our passions, and not abandon the things that we loved most before we had kids, including keeping our marriages alive and passionate. And this leaves us scratching our heads, because something has to give. A choice to say yes to one thing is a choice to say no to another. No person, woman, or man can be in two places at one time. Omnipresence is unfortunately not a gift granted to us mortals. So we choose, one way or another, and then the guilt sets in. So many voices would tell us that our motherhood role, this changing the world for one, is all that matters in our lives, that it is what we are designed for, made for, created for, and that it is the pinnacle of our role on this earth. So many other voices tell us that we must choose to continue changing the world and not allow our children to get in the way of that choice. We are liberated, strong, independent women, and no one can put us in a box. Both sides leave us wanting, don't they? One side leaving us feeling truncated, frustrated, as though all we were ever called to, educated for, and experienced in outside of motherhood never mattered. And on the other side of the spectrum, feeling as though our children are simply an inconvenience to be managed as we pursue our dreams. No mother goes one single day without feeling the weight of her choices, one way or another. We are also assaulted by voices that are constantly telling us to savor the moment because time flies by so fast. So not only are we under the pressure of making every moment picture perfect, capturing it, and making sure it lives up to an advertising standard, We are also now living under the weight of a nostalgia for the future, an aching sadness for something we haven't even experienced yet. What began as the power to choose has become a trap of perfection that we can't escape. I have two daughters, ages four and one. I leave the house two days a week to work, and I often work during nap times, after they go to bed, and in the in-between moments of the day. They see me working, and they know it is part of my life, our life as a family and I wouldn't want it any other way. They don't fully understand what I do yet, but I can't wait to tell them someday. In my life as a mother, I have chosen to walk the line, and let me tell you, it's a tightrope between two high-rises. The stakes are high, and you sweat a lot, and wonder if you are doing the right thing, that maybe you should turn back. But once you're there, the thrill of it takes over, and you know you have to keep going. I choose to be present with my kids when I am with them, and I choose to spend intentional time away from them to pursue my dreams. I believe mothers are not only not hindered in their dual callings and vocations, but are given a special grace that allows them to be even more productive, more goal-oriented, and more focused than anyone else. I believe when it comes to pursuing our mothering and our other calling, we are not at a disadvantage, but we have several advantages. 1. Creativity Simply being in the presence of children causes us to open our eyes to the wonder of creation. We see things differently. We stop. We sit. We listen. We marvel. This is the wellspring of all creativity. 
If you ever feel dried up creatively, you only need to spend an hour with a toddler, pretending and exploring. Number two, play. Our children teach us how to play again, and all innovation comes from the freedom we experience in play. Play is the furthest thing from wasting time. It is a needed and valuable commodity. Without play, we cannot come up with new ideas. We cannot remember what really matters. We cannot innovate. As moms, we experience every single day what major corporations such as Google and Lego spend millions to cultivate, a sense of play and wonder. 3. Urgency Mothers know that when their children are napping, they have a set amount of time to accomplish something. We do not have the luxury of putting off priority items until later. As moms, we don't get a later. Later will bring with it a myriad of new responsibilities. We get right now. 4. Focus When mothers do get any amount of free time, we know how to laser focus on what needs to get done. We know how to knock things off the list, and quickly. We have the ability to focus on a project better than a CEO in a boardroom on his or her third cup of coffee. And sometimes, when we need to, we know how to just take that time to focus on rest and self-care. 5. Planning ahead Moms throughout the land know the panic that can ensue when caught out at a restaurant without a diaper needed for an accident, or the horror of forgetting a pacifier at home when your child is screaming in the back seat. We know the importance of planning ahead. We don't forget one single thing, because we can't. We know that if we plan ahead, things will go much more smoothly when game time comes. I believe that it's time we define our own version of success. We can devote ourselves to our children, we can create a loving, playful, and joy-filled home environment, and we can do what God has called us to do outside of our mothering if we so choose. We can choose to live in the both-slash-and in the tension. It comes down to this, the freedom to choose, not based on guilt or fear, not based on the desire to please or heed all the competing voices, based on your own family's needs and your own calling. Every mom is so unique in her personality, desires, and motivations, and we have to start honoring that. So mamas, consider this your permission slip, to ditch perfect and be 100% yourself, unapologetic and unashamed. You just listened to the post titled, When You Love Your Work and Your Kids, by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co. Now, everyone, whether you are living with your family or apart in these challenging times, there are many healthy practices you can take when navigating your relationships, one of which includes speaking to a professional therapist should you need any. BetterHelp helps connect you and your personal licensed professional therapist online, where you can schedule your weekly video or phone sessions at your own convenience. With their counselor specializing in stress, family conflicts, LGBT matters, and more, they make it easy for you to change your counselors whenever needed. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. No more sitting uncomfortably in a waiting room and gain the flexibility of messaging your counselor anytime. BetterHelp is not self-help. It is professional counseling where everything you share is confidential. And guys, I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com ORD. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash O-R-D. A super important post from Hillary Barnett today that I really hope resonated with all parents, mothers and fathers alike. I'd also like to point out that this incredible philosophy she's laid out is hugely applicable to most anything in life. Whether you're caught between two ideas like motherhood and career, or even stuck in a rut doing something that you don't feel has any value. What she's trying to illustrate is that regardless of what we're spending our time on, if we seek to learn from it, we'll find that it has many parallels with other endeavors in life, and that we can bring more optimism and readiness to anything we pursue if we take time to recognize what skills we're harvesting at any given moment and the many different scenarios in which they can be applied. Even if you're out of a job, uh, you're likely learning how to live on a budget. You are sharpening your work ethic as you apply to new places. You are learning about the services many companies offer as you do submit those applications. You're learning patience, etc. Many of the life skills we talk about a lot 
are directly related and show up at least marginally in anything we do. Something to definitely keep in mind. So thank you to Hillary for sharing this very versatile piece and for making 829 possible. We are finished for now, though, folks, so I challenge you to spend the rest of the day taking a second look at what skills you might be sharpening that you haven't paid attention to. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you'll be back tomorrow for our final episode of the week, where your optimal life awaits.